The 2015 Retina MacBook Pro has long been regarded as one of the finest MacBook Pros ever produced. We can tell you one thing right away, that they were pretty solid when they were released back in 2015 with Intel's quad-core processors and Retina display, which were a big deal. But those quad processors are now almost six years old, and Apple has recently released its latest MacBook with its latest M1 chipset, which is an octa-core processor. This sounds really intriguing, but the big factor here is pricing. The latest 13-inch MacBook Pro 2020 starts from $1,299, which you can easily get the 13-inch MacBook Pro 2015 in a very decent shape, around $400 to $500. The mid-2015 MacBook Pro looks like having pretty good value for your money, but how does it do almost six years later, especially in the era of Apple Silicon? Is it still worth buying? And if you buy it today, how long in the future would its processor be sufficient for you? This video is going to answer all these questions in detail, so make sure you watch this video to the end carefully. Let's get started. There's no denying that the MacBook Pro that Apple is presently offering with the M1 chip is an incredible piece of equipment. However, a small group of MacBook Pro customers who purchased the laptop between 2016 and 2018 has experienced different problems with the laptop. The major problems included a malfunctioning keyboard, the display blacking out, and the touch bar acting erratically. While not all MacBook Pro customers from 2016 to 2018 have reported all the problems, a significant number of them have. Most of them have said that their laptop has been plagued with keyboard problems. Following these events, many people have resorted to the internet to spread the message that the 2015 MacBook Pros are much better. The MacBook Pros from mid-2015 are available for purchase at a discounted price from Apple's refurbished store. You can get the 15-inch model at a very reasonable price. We will talk about this specific model. So, let's dive into the appearance of these MacBooks. MacBooks are best known for their premium look and sleek design. This is still the case with this particular MacBook. This is by far the most interesting feature of this device. You don't even need to touch it to appreciate its beauty, you can just gaze at it. It is entirely made of aluminum, with perfectly cut edges on all sides, which is nothing short of a technical marvel, especially when you consider how thin this thing is. This MacBook is the last one proudly displaying the illuminated Apple logo right behind the display, which smoothly transitions into a black solid and is definitely pleasant to operate. The palm rest is fairly large and pleasant, allowing you to rest your hands comfortably while using the keyboard. Behind the palm rest are the twin stereo speaker grills, the keyboard, and of course, the glass touchpad. Moving forward, the next thing to look at is the display of the MacBook Pro 2015. The stunning Retina 15 4-inch screen has a fantastic resolution of 2880 by 1800 pixels. Yet another highlight of this Mac is that it stands out in a market full of poorly maintained screens and cheap looking attempts to compete, but they don't have a chance. This masterpiece is as sharp as they come, and it has nothing to offer that other Macs, even those presently on the market, do not. It has a maximum brightness of 300 nits, but in all honesty, it doesn't seem to be anywhere near dull, even when used in daylight, and you can use the brightness slider in a moderate setting. So considering the things we have said till now, we would say it's sufficient for indoor use. Now here comes the most interesting part of the video, the hardware which is installed in this MacBook. It's important to keep in mind that when this monstrous computer was first launched, it cost about $3,000 brand new. And oh boy was it good. So good that it can easily still flow like fire through your everyday office computing tasks. You can see the specs. This is what we're talking about. It has a wealth of specifications that guarantee it will continue to perform as if it were brand new right out of the box, even after six years. You can use it with tons of content loaded into your primary productivity tool. You can make daily live conversations on Skype, Teams, and Zoom to help you get more work done. The quad-core processor installed in it is more than enough for daily office tasks. But here, we would like to tell you if you are someone who needs a lot of work from the processor, this MacBook just might not get the job done for you. For example, you are a content creator who needs to do a lot of video editing and processing, software compiling, financial scientific modeling, or 3D rendering, and other tasks just like that. This hardware is not good enough for you. You should focus on buying the latest MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Not only will it serve you better, but you will be future-proof. But don't forget, if you are just like most people in the world who demand a decent performance from their computer, not super heavy, just like we talked about now, we are talking about simple day-to-day -day usage, normal video editing, internet browsing, Microsoft Office, just go ahead and buy this one. Don't worry, you would have a great time with this machine and you would love it. Now, this raises another question. 
Is this machine future-proof if you were to buy it today? After how many years would upgrading your MacBook become very necessary for you? The answer is simple. If you don't need processor-heavy tasks, you are good to go for at least three years without any problem. So, the next thing to consider is the software in the MacBook Pro 2015. The MacBook Pro 2015 is capable of running the most recent version of the operating system, Big Sur, and the optimization is excellent. No, this is not only for a few particular devices, but for almost every machine that has been authorized by Apple to run the software. It definitely hasn't slowed down in the least, if not any faster, and the greatest part is that everything is very sensitive to your input and commands. You get the impression that everything in this machine is so simple but so exquisite, so precise, and so one-of-a-kind at the same time. And the manner that each application is integrated into the whole ecosystem leaves you wondering why you haven't made a move to Mac years earlier. It definitely has its strange aspects, at least until you get used to it, but if you figure out how to navigate your way around, you'll fall in love with it. Now, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. We really appreciate this. And last but not least, the peripherals of this device. The keyboard it has is really amazing. Just before the defective butterfly switches, we have the traditional scissor switch, which we have always enjoyed. It's a pleasure to type on, travel is enjoyable, thick, and it does not irritate others in your direct proximity, no matter how hard you try. Clicky, responsive, and an excellent experience in general. It does not have the irritating touch bar, which is a blessing to be honest. The trackpad can be characterized as one of the finest in the market, at least until the next one comes along, of course. It hasn't changed much in recent generations. You can change the sensitivity to your liking, and scrolling is as smooth as ever on the glass surface. The speakers of this device are also very decent. They allow you to listen to all your favorite music, as well as watch movies. Just turn up the volume to max level, and you'll be in for a treat. So, what would we recommend? Well, it depends. It depends on your pocket. If you can't afford the new MacBook Pro, then it becomes a pretty straightforward option. Just go ahead and buy the MacBook Pro 2015. But if you have flexible pockets and you are thinking about buying either the MacBook Pro 2020 or MacBook Pro 2015, we will highly recommend going with the newer MacBooks featuring the M1 processor. And if you can wait a bit, we have more good news for you. The upcoming Apple MacBook will feature an M1X chip, which would even surpass the performance of existing MacBooks. So if you are a person who needs heavy processing work from their machine, this upcoming MacBook would be a game changer for you. So that was it for today's video. We hope we have answered all your questions. We would like to know, what do you think about the MacBook Pro 2015? Would you buy it? Or if you are already using it, how's your experience with it? Let us know in the comments. We keep bringing you such amazing videos, so make sure you have subscribed to the channel and press the bell icon. We will catch you in our next one.